Very well, I hope to make this my last part, okay? Because I have to speak at the speed of lightning given that I'm suffering right now with time and I'm also suffering with having lost my footage at first. Okay, listen, these people with this like random thing, please go check out the previous part to understand what in the world I'm talking about here. I'm just carrying on from where I left off and I'm speaking at the speed of lightning because I don't have time to be speaking slowly. Okay, very well. People of the kingdom of darkness are like ones who di di directly and deliberately basically make a plead, plead with the devil so they're not left alone like the rest of the unbelieving world to just carry on as normal deceived with their fake religion deceived with their good deeds that they're going to enter into heaven and then they die and go to hell so the devil does not care how he sends people to hell and so far as he sends them there but who are of the kingdom of darkness have got a grander propensity or a proclivity towards trying to flee to jesus why due to the fact that they make an observation as a result of being involved in the occult that there is power in the name of jesus the moment they join the occult they're given a strange obsession with christians and this obsession is because of their difficulty when dealing with them they struggle to bring them low and they also focus on them and not like anom anom anomalously they focus on them uh, disproportionately in comparison to the rest of the world and this obsession they then make an observation in and of themselves because the spirit is able to be taught and trained and catches on to stuff even though the devil wants to keep people blinded okay they make an observation that they're very likely very potentially might actually be a rescue in christ out of this darkness but they leave it as a, a goodness gracious what are you doing like a bad project manager they leave it as a contingency plan they thoroughly have got christianity as a contingency plan a lot of times they have prophesied they have pre sorry what is this the name of the lord is on their lips but their hearts are far from the lord jesus christ right they are also professing christians and so they are in church on sunday and they feel guilty for what they're doing but they still do what they do and they encourage others to join it they however understand you know how the bible says these people believe in jesus they believe in god but the bible says that you believe in god you do nothing special even the demons believe and they tremble so demons are even more pious so just to merely believe in god is not sufficient so yes we are saved by faith alone not of works not of anything we've done but our deeds display that we are not like the demons because they also have faith in god they also believe in god but what is the difference between a devil and the fact that we honor god we obey god we are not fallen from god so what makes you different from a demon that has fallen out of heaven what makes you different from a fallen angel that's been plunged out of heaven when you are roaming these streets like that fallen angel however saying jesus is lord goodness gracious demons say the exact same thing they know so if at all there's no difference between you and fallen angels i guess you ought go then to where it is that the lord has prepared for them to burn forever that place that hot place that's been prepared for the devil and his angels you're gonna go there because you are operating like the, the devil in the sense that you also believe in god but the demons tremble satan trembles at the sight of god in a way that even you are not that's what's good so it is imperative to understand that repentance or keeping in repentance is part and parcel of the christian experience they go hand in hand they are synonymous they're not mutually exclusive you cannot have the one without the other the one validates that the other is true in other words your works validate that your salvation is true so if at all you are truly born again you display with your works that you're saved you repent you repent so people that are trying to like act like that's not a thing and call her and call people like me who speak things like these heretics i'm sorry you're gonna have yourself a hard day at that last day when the lord is like depart from me work of iniquity i never knew you and you're like but lord did i not abc and he's gonna tell you i don't know you because the demons just like you believed and they did one up on you they trembled whereas you walked around like the demons no conviction of sin you are probably like you you thoroughly live like the devil and expected to enter my rest like blah mahade but it doesn't work that way yeah but witches are aware people who are engaged in in, in dark arts they have an awareness that there is power in the name of jesus because of their uh, uh, addiction to christians they become obsessed with believers they're made to focus on us uh, because the devil is focused on us we are the evangelists of the earth we are the spreaders of the gospel on the earth we are the people who give people a hope about uh, you know the, the the hope to come i apologize for the speech lack we are the individuals on the planet that are showing everybody the path of life and so of course the devil is obsessed with us because he doesn't want us to be proliferated he wants to discredit us he wants to smother our testimony he wants to etc mm. so of course he's gonna be all up in demon attacking us but he will more so than anything invest all of his fervor might and uh, splendor in keeping people in the kingdom of darkness in the kingdom of darkness the rest of the deceived masses that are going to hell 
believing that they're going to heaven because they're great dads, he leaves them without haunting them. But these guys dabbled. And so they've seen Casper the ghost. So he will graduate Casper from Casper to Chucky's bride. And so scare the living daylights out of the demon worshiper. And this witchy guy and girl, having made an observation, therefore, of the power of Jesus because of their obsession with Christians ever since they joined the occult, will use Christianity as a contingency plan. They will put it in their back pocket lest the haunting in their lives should get so extreme that now they need to call on the name of Jesus. And if at all they are professing Christians, they, they, they patronize God because they have it as a contingency plan instead of the plan they don't flee to god at the time when they feel convicted this is wicked they are literally leaning on ephesians chapter one only that's their bible like nothing else matters the bible is made up of nothing but ephesians chapter one not of works a free gift of god don't come tell me rubbish and so they live like the devil but they're always like jesus i love you jesus forgive me jesus i'm sorry jesus thank you for giving me salvation jesus thank you that i've escaped hellfire they are using the name of god as a means to get away with a murder that god has told them you cannot get away with it because there is a holiness without which no one will see god they love the world they do whatever they want to do but they have got a what they imagine a get out of hell free ticket even though they live like hell and it's called jesus christ these guys are the seven sons of skiva I'm trying to explain to you guys, devil worshipping Christians are the seven sons of Sceva. All of you guys that have got Jesus as a contingency plan, you'll pray to him tomorrow when you're feeling a super like healthily guilty and also when you are feeling scared because your baby won't stop crying because you brought home Mbepo. Because you were at the Sangoma two day, like two hours ago. You who are causing your baby to be colicky, your husband to get nightmares, your house to have a poltergeist in it, and you know that that's what's going on. Now all of a sudden you want to be like, Jesus, please in the name of Jesus. And then because you are a professing Christian and you're always in church, you then will actually even go out of your way. Now that the haunting is getting to a stream, whatever it is that you're doing is getting out of hand. You will then fast for crying out loud, fasting really, is that what we're doing right now? We'll draw fast again. You're going to go and starve yourself, is that what we're doing? Mm. You're going to lose a whole bunch of weight just to get the entity to leave your house that you brought in and you don't really truly repent. The scriptures make it clear that obedience is better than sacrifice. So when you fast and you pray, you grovel and you beg and you grunt for 21 days because you have to remove whatever principality or whatever authority ruler, spiritual wickedness or in high places that you put over your household. You now want to uproot it. And so you make like Daniel and fast without realizing that Daniel was a pious man. Daniel was a regarded man in the sight of God. Daniel's prayers were fragrance to Emmanuel. And so his affliction was like that of any other Christian. Demonic attack will always come at us, but the Lord will always give us a way out and the Lord will give us all the weapons we need in order to make war with the kingdom of darkness. The, day, the Lord will give us power to demolish arguments, lofty pretensions, everything that tries to exalt itself above the Most High and help us to hold into captivity everything to the obedience of Jesus Christ. The Lord God Almighty will give us the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Lord God Almighty will give us the helmet of salvation, basically the full armor of God. And we will go to war with entities that are frankly gratuitously violent, violent against us. We did nothing to them other than be Christian and they are now attacking the living daylights out of us. But when an entity attacks you because you were poking and prodding and playing away having a field day with the Ouija board on that day you are being punished or you are suffering for being a meddler thank you it is written in first Peter verse 4 da somewhere when you get punished or when you suffer for being a violent man or a bandit or a meddler then you had it coming do not suffer for evil but you guys are, are, are suffering for evil why because you are meddling with demon activity you are meddling with Ouija boards. You are meddling with Mpepo. You are meddling with goat's blood and you're drinking it. You are meddling with Isangoma. You are meddling with like uh, medicine, like hovering all up in that monstrosity in order to get demons to come enter into you because you think you're Kimang Rihanna in the music video umbrella. Come in to me, come in to me. You are a meddler. And so because you are a meddler and that random kind of dabla chiquita, when then you have suddenly got a haunting all up in your grow and you think that you can put yourself in the position to be Daniel and so successfully remove the prince of Persia over Iran like ancient Iran do that and then therefore ultimately get your answered prayer you are naive all that those entities are going to respond to you as when you fast gravel moan groan grant ta 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 in your tongues that don't nobody even understand because they're demonic the things that you're trying to cast out in the name eliga jesu the precious and mighty name of Ujeso Christ, the Nazareth. They're gonna say, Lord Jesus, Lord Akona, Obizu Kulmangai, Yamazna. 
footing your mouth no pinky no karabo koto wena ungu who exactly these entities will say this Jesus that you're busy speaking to in strange tongues about I also know karabo and pinky but who who you would be who who you is surely what your name is ah uh ah -uh, proper they will think that you are Beyonce when you are busy praying to Father Mother God mm. they will recognize you as the reprobate that you are and so not respond. The way demons respond in the presence of Jesus, they believe and they tremble. In the presence of Karabo, who is indwelt by the Holy Spirit, seated in heavenly places with the Most High. They be like, oh Karabo, what do you want with us? I'm hot. I gotta go. You know I'm bad. I'm bad. And you know it. And so I'm stepping. Mm. They'll leave the kitchen because frankly, it'll be too hot all up in that ecosystem. But when you rock up as a wannabe Daniel, so you're like a, um, a, a, a dandy as opposed to Daniel, and you thoroughly think that you can fast and pray and grovel and moan and grunt, the Lord will say, obedience is better than sacrifice. And you have given me a sacrifice that is wholeheartedly unacceptable to me. You are like Cain giving me a blemished sacrifice. I will not embrace it. I will not accept it. Will you not be embraced if you do what is right? The Lord will say the same things to you that he said to Cain. But you then go and you kill Abel Wanabatu that has been standing with God all along. And when then you do that, you go and you massacre Karabo and then you think you can flee to the wilderness because you have foreseen in your little glass bowl that Karabo is about to endure a greater mana demonic attack. God will ensconce or protect Karabo where she is at chilling endure to a lot of demonic attack but she will conquer but you 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 will flee you will scatter you will scatter do you understand because Karawa I know Jesus I know Paul I know Peter I know Pinky Mina Petronella I know these people but who are you and when these demons say who are you and they don't know you because you're busy fasting and grunting claiming to be Daniel who the devil knows but who are you we're dealing with a beating. We're dealing with a whooping, guys. You're gonna get whipped. And in my dream, my family members done got whooped. These seven sons of Skiva done got whipped, guys. They got whipped, they got whipped, and they got whipped bad. They got whipped bad. Because they abandoned me, thinking that Mina, I'm in trouble, I'm going to be left for dead, I'm gonna die. Because there is an attack coming all up in my grizzine. And then they went out there in the wilderness and danced around. And where they went, that's where the arrows came shooting at them and they came back running. And unfortunately for them, they were pursued by the same, by, by, by the entities that attacked them in a different zone. And they came back. They came back with them, meaning that the ecosystem that they left, they were not supposed to leave it at all. Because after leaving it, they brought back when they finally ran back to it. Seven demons more intense than they. What I'm trying to explain to you guys is that Satan, Los Satan Yuen, he is incredibly possessive of devil worshippers. He is possessive over them in a way that he isn't for everybody else in the world that's la-di-da going to hell because they think they're a good, uh, going, thinking they're going to heaven because they're a good dad and they find themselves in hell. The devil is very exorbitantly uh, possessive of those that have made a contract with him. Even though those contracts are not binding, in the name of Jesus, you can thoroughly break loose. You can. You will, however, be given a hard time if you try to escape. You will be given a hard time. So there is no single more haunted group of people than devil worshippers. They try. They try to run back to Jesus, but because they have had a history of being like a ping pong ball, a pendulum, in, out, in, out, in, out of Christianity. When they then fast and pray, because the demon attack is too hectic and the hauntings, my child can't sleep, this, that. There's so much falling apart. Plus now they want me to sacrifice my daughter. They then try to run. Having called themselves Christians, they were in church every Sunday. Granted, they served their ushers. It's on Dwayne. I want to go like I call me single with them on every feet at their grave. And then on I go disabled. Hallelujah. Every Sunday, the choir members leading like praise and worship. Voices sounding so mellifluous and yet upizi mutu aloy. Upizi mutu si she say u she si sage. Ngama weekdays. To ward off entities in her house because she has brought them in. She is using all different kinds of things, dabbling, like proper, picking out all different kinds of alternatives to Christianity to see what works because she is unstable in all of her ways and is tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine. So I am telling on Sundays in church, I am telling you, I am busy burning sage in her apartment because she's brought, she's brought some pretty hard knock uh, intense demons in her ecosystem and now she's trying to find anything at all to ward them off when this woman then decides to fast for three weeks girl fella starving herself yeah mm. these entities will come back and they'll be like karabu i know mina i know who dish no huh 
Dina he, dina who? How do you even spell it? Does it start with a P? I suga wa wa pak. And so they will attack them ever further. Peter, I know. Garabo, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? When you dabble in the occult, using Christianity as a contingency plan, you are basically making it such that on the day you decide to fast for real, and now you want to get rid of all of this random stuff that's afflicting you, you're gonna get whooped by demons. These are tumpas, your trapas, son. You gonna know? You're not gonna know what your name is in the middle, Malqueta. They're gonna ransack you. They're gonna beat you up on some. I know Carabo, and I know Peter. I know Paul, and I know that name of Jesus. It makes me tremble. But who? are you and then they will beat you up and in my dream my family members then got whooped until they fled back to where i was at evidencing them trying to run back to god to christianity but all they did was bring seven spirits more wicked than they they brought all of that stuff that they were running towards making their spiritual war loftier even than mine i was enduring spiritual war as i always have been i'm a christian i will always be targeted by by darkness i will always be targeted by the devil and his fallen ones i will always be targeted by the kingdom of darkness so i will always endure a spiritual war for as long as i am a believer on earth i will always be at war with the kingdom of darkness but what i endure ain't jack in comparison to what people who have dabbled in the occult endure so out of all of the earth's citizens the most afflicted by the devil are devil worshippers followed by christians and then the rest of the world is li largely just left to be because the devil loves to make them believe that he doesn't exist so basically my sorrow ain't jack in comparison to the, in comparison to the sorrow of devil worshippers dabblers people who have gone on right ahead to play with satan like he's a kitty's toy they have got some pretty hard knock hauntings in their households and they're trying to act like i got it bad now i don't got you got it you got it bad you're the one that got it bad you got it better than me you got it worse than me and what's worse with you is that you don't even have any weapons to fight it off whereas i do i sometimes i every so often after having a battle a season of suffering um, from demonic attack i get reprieve i get given relief you know there are birds chirping butterflies flying around all over the show water springs you can hear the waterfall in the background the way it's so tranquil i get peace for a season and then i'm back at war again but people in the darkness 24 hours a day and they're running these hojos these hojaikis sometimes they drive you to suicide sometimes they drive you to irrational behavior they drive you to murder they're always telling you kill that one fatom 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 i was watching i was trying like some uh, documentary I, I wanted to watch it but i didn't because i don't want to be grieved um of some uh, former serial killer in this country uh, i think he's late now but or oh, in prison i don't know what's going on by the name of butibur in the 90s he used to go and kill people and one of the things that he was he, he said in the interview as they, the, the the guy that they used to act in that capacity he's like fatom he's like I, I was in the street it was in the in the street walking around and then uh, I, I saw a boy over there and i was like fatom in other words take him take his life what entities were talking to him entities were talking to him saying take him that's what you guys are dealing with you're sitting where you're sitting next thing you're getting all itchy for murder you get all bloodthirsty you, you get all angry, you gnashing your teeth, fangs coming out looking like a vampire. Next thing you'll be trying to kill Garabo, Fatom. That's you in the occult. Do Zifela watching some show on Netflix, next thing Fatom. Next thing burn a candle to kill Garabo. That's what's going on with this rando in America. He's sitting in a corner, next thing every two seconds, Zifela Fatom. Say suko made the fat, say suko made the 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 for lure. Mmm. What a umpola, I mean, if you swag a little swagisa, Lomuntu was America. Why? Because Usatanupism tat Lomunt. Fat home. Mm. So they make you do strange things that go bump in the night. They make, they make you cast more and more demons. And when these voices are ringing and ringing in your head long enough and you can't in the name of Jesus cast them out because they don't know who you are and they beat you up, sometimes you grab a gun and you shoot yourself dead. So if you think I'm in a bad knot, a bad bunch, goodness gracious, you're worse off. I ain't got no entity telling me fat home. I don't have no demon telling me kill the cat. I don't have any entity telling me destroy the sister. Burn the house. Yeah, fatom. Nishalakwa ma fatom, guys. No, it's not all right. It's thoroughly not all right. These things are pursuing you violently and vehemently, and they won't leave you alone because a yellow sukom yota di on the di on the vesa res chafat. So basically, long story short, this whole thing, I'm trying to cut it as best as I can. I'm already knowing a way into my exercise time. This is what God has to say to you guys that are professing Christians, putting Christianity as a contingency plan, lest your occult magic should disappoint you violently. Mm. You are facing a danger of never ever been, giving, being, being given reprieve. I would implore you to right now, repent as fast as the speed of Lechadima, right? 
as fast as the speed of lightning and truly give your lives to God so that you might truly be known by the devil in a scary capacity where he will say, Nonchanta I know, uh, Beth I know, but who exactly is this Daniel guy? Boo! And then like trap home, right? You who are being told every single time you happen upon a Christian's content and you get so, you know, itchy. Like Usatan, it just inspires you. Rando. You don't feel like to itch. Next thing you want to fat home. You want to fat karabo. Like you are drawn to my ministry because I'm Christian. But you're not truly Christian. You're not truly saved. You've got like a back pocket of witchcraft and a back pocket of Christianity. And every so often you whip out whatever you feel you need to use in order to get whatever you want. Yeah, you're the kind of person that the devil sends to a Christian ministry. Because he knows that you can't exercise self-control over your witchy thing. You will try to keep yourself in a bunch. But then when you're sitting next to the Christian and you're fellowshipping, you will suddenly develop in your heart so much jealousy, envy, whatever it is. And then next thing, fat and the devil will tell you to go fat karabo take her take her and they sing wah witchcraft bring back lost lava wah um what is this destroy the career wah destroy the ministry make sure it doesn't work again wah he will agitate you just as the evil spirit inside Saul agitated him until he even though David was playing the harp wah he went and darted David threw a dagger at the guy and it his I mean like it flew right by his nose and he was like whoa this guy's trying to kill me and he fled the, the, the devil has always loved to infiltrate professing Christians, especially those who love witchcraft, into the lives of Christians so that when he, they have been nicely placed together sitting next to one another, then he can speak to them in their ears since they've never really truly surrendered to God and say, Fadom! And then wah! Next thing you've got this chick pouncing on you. That's why as Christians we have so many disappointments. People just constantly like changing on us overnight. Mm. It's cause like, see ya, they have been swinging on a chandelier, on a chandelier. That's all done. But busy got it low, but low, but like the carry magic wand every second day. Mm. But you're always in church. Yeah, be afraid, be very afraid when you're all up in that grizzard properly, like thoroughly, like all up in your grizzard. Mm. Properly and thoroughly trying to contact a christian the urge you feel the pull towards that christian's ministry sometimes it's just satan knowing that you are not known you are not of god he can differentiate between a true christian and one who isn't and a person that has got christianity as a contingency plan in their back pocket to just whip it out and say in the name of jesus when a haunting gets too extreme these guys are the seven sons of skiva you will flee you will run scared after the christian has successfully prayed against you and entities that you're trying to cast out will not respond and so you're going to find yourself perpetually haunted with no reprieve no reprieve and some of y'all need to look within and see if maybe uh hebrews 6 hebrews 5 11 to 14 and 6 all the way up until 12 is not about you i'm gonna read this in closing because i gotta go and work out now time is against me but basically this is a warning against apostasy those of you who call yourselves christians you think you've been walking around with jesus all along because you said the sinner's prayer Marawaloya. you are a witch or you are just some heavily compromised person that when you are in the presence of a true christian you can't help but despise them because you despise those who do good you despise the true veracity of their christianity you despise the fact that they're really truly with the in the light walking in the light walking in the light walking in the light walking in the light of god you you can't stand you can't stand the glory that god has given them mm, that's what's good you you must be very 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 afraid you who are walking in a reprobateness that is similar to that of 2 timothy 3 and romans 1 you are on thin ice and you very potentially might not even be able to go back to god and it is your prerogative or responsibility now to go and read this passage of the word of god to gauge if at all you've not been made left out altogether that you can't even repent like it's over you can't come back because you're trying to crucify the son of man twice you are in dangerous turf those of you who use christianity as a back pocket like contingency plan you are chilling out in spiritual milk for way too long without graduating over the meat you should be teachers by now and yet you're still groveling around on the floor oh, as a baby even though you're a whole grown man you're like a matriculant a matriculant or not 25 at your in these streets having your first baby as as, a, as like a married woman in matric because you are not graduating to loftier heights and everybody is busy teaching you teaching you teaching you teaching you and you never ever learn you are always learning but never coming to a knowledge of what truth that's you like janice and jambres described in second timothy 3 and now it appears in hebrews 5 11 to 14 and then 6 going down up until 12. you are on dangerous turf you might not even be able to come back to god ever you don't get to have witchcraft as something you can use to handle all of your enemies in the periphery when you are jealous of them 
you, you don't get to have that as an option and still enter heaven and still call yourself a christian you very potentially might be left out altogether reprobate and this here in the book of hebrews ought be a warning and a whip that is being cracked all up in your grill as a seven son of skiva as one of the seven sons of skiva repent truly that your prayers in the name of christ might not be an abomination to emmanuel but a fragrance because the effect of fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much but the prayers of the wicked are an abomination to emmanuel and when you keep on fasting worse off are you because obedience is better than sacrifice stop fasting starving your body getting skinny for no other reason uh, for, sorry for, for 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 the reason of spirituality just say you're going on a diet but do not say it's a spiritual fast if at all obesity using christianity as a back pocket you fornicator you stop you wish you stop if you don't want to leave all that don't even profess christianity because you're on dangerous turf when you claim to be of god and yet walk in the darkness this might be you let me read this in closing so i can go on right ahead and exercise warning against apostasy 5 11 it goes about this we have much to say and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing for though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of god you need milk not solid food for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled uh, you currently still just need milk like i said matriculate already all right you need milk not solid food for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child but solid food is for the mature for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil okay therefore let us let us leave the elementary doctrine of christ and go on to maturity not laying again not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and um f uh, faith towards god so you see that a repentance from dead works and faith towards god so those of y'all that claim that you can live the lives that you want in jefela ladi da in these streets and so far as you've made a profession of faith you are entirely naive uh, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God and instead of instruction about washings the laying on of hands the resurrection of the death and the eternal of the dead and the eternal judgment and this we will do if God's per God permits for this is where it gets real deep and intense where you should be very afraid be very afraid uh, for it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of god and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the son of god to their own harm and holding him up to contempt for land that has a drunk that has drunk the rain that often falls on it and produces a crop useful for to those for whose sake it is cultivated receives a blessing from god so basically the harvest is plentiful the laborers are few and the laborers are producing a beautiful crop for god but then there are these seven sons of skiva where, where it is written but if it bears thorns and thistles it is worthless and near to being cursed and its end is to be burned its end is to be burned you guys essentially hellfire though we speak in this way yet in your case beloved we feel sure of better things uh, that belong to salvation so basically do a better thing guys the rest of this is just encouragement but i'll read through it anyway just in sealing okay for god is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints as you still do and we desire each one of you to throw the same earnestness uh sorry to show the same earnestness uh to have the full assurance of hope until the end so that you may not be sluggish but imitators of those who through the faith and patience inherit the promises so uh, please go read this again on your own and meditate on it guys because if you're busy watching a christian ministry because you are a professing christian and so you have to every so often get some christian literature in some christian understanding in some christian ch ch chatter in but you're not really saved like proper you are still bewitching your colleagues you are still fornicating you're cohabiting you're still doing all of these things be afraid be very afraid this particular passage body of god's work is telling you that you cannot crucify the son of man twice so make a choice for jesus and stick with him and do not allow yourself to be taken away by the tsunami of temptation where the devil will slippery will slide you into the dms of a christian because you are a professing christian are a professing christian and that the moment and then the moment you're sitting next to this christian alongside them fellowshipping then all of a sudden is raised up an evil spirit that makes you bring out a dart and fat home bring out a dart and just suddenly just you know hit a christian hit a david as a uh, who's a soul check to see if you're not soul 
Check to see if you're not Cain, killing Abel, because you've given God a blemished sacrifice. Check, you guys. My family members are like horses, I've been saying it, mm. whose legs are broken. They should be put down, but God is having mercy by causing people just like my family members, which many of my audience are, as few of you as there might be, because you keep bewitching my content, making sure that I don't get ahead, I don't progress, I don't do anything, all that jazz. Mm. You're like my family, leaving me for dead, and then you run out into the wilderness, and then the, de and then the, world, the devil haunts you in that wilderness. You then try to go back to Christianity, but then when you try to go back to Christianity, the devils will tell you, Karabo, I know. Peter, I know. But who are you? Karabo, I know. Renelo, I know. But who are you? Karabo, I know. Sandra, I know. But who are you? The, the more you dabble with darkness and the more you walk in filth and profess Christianity, the more you make out of yourselves the seven sons of Sceva. And if you're the seven sons of Sceva, you're five seconds away from being disqualified according to Hebrews 6. Hebrews 5, 11 to 14 and then 6 going down. Like I said, be afraid. Be very afraid. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Quen K. Peace out.